<clears throat> what do you think, bro? <laughs> well, I'm recording. Hi. <laughs> oh, hey, everybody. I thought I can't possibly miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> we could. Or something we can all, 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 all collaborate, all. collaborate our thoughts and opinions towards. Culture. <laughs> that gives everyone a why. Culture. That's a big conversation. Oh yeah, let's define culture. According to us. <coughs> culture. Culture. Because there's not just the culture of the people, there's the culture of a garden. Yeah. And a lab. Culture is cultivate if you run it through. Okay. Think, feel through that culture. Culture. It's a word that applies over so many, so many environments. Yeah. Mm. A workplace. Yep. Family. A school. Okay, so um, let's start with the definition <coughs> of culture. According to the... According to mm -hmm. thy phone. Uh, culture, spelt C-U-L-T-U-R-E. Um, the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement re regarded collectively. The arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. I, the ideas, customs, and social behavior of a particular people or society. Um, biology, being a verb of culture, maintain, um, i.e. tissues, cells, bacteria, etc., in conditions for suitable, in conditions suitable for growth. So um, a culture, from what I understand, is like a petri dish. Mm. You mm -hmm. put a culture in the bottom of a petri dish when it comes to scientific, um, and that is suitable for growth. I actually think that that's probably more of a definition than the others, mm. because in a in a healthy culture, it is suitable for growth. And people are artistic and creative and expressive yeah. and produce things that can be enjoyed collectively. Over time, collectively. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Thoughts, feelings, throw them out, guys. You know, the inside stuff? Out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you. Oh, jump, jump to beliefs and, and um, you know, just uh, values and. Um, upbringing and mentoring and mm. so many words that just are for you know wrongly or rightly um breaking with tradition breaking with the culture um church um no similarity oh it's good okay similarity you know and then um i mean i was always a black sheep I was called a black sheep, and I'm um, pretty sure I didn't go bar, but I certainly had my own ideas about some stuff. Oh. <laughs> 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 and, you know, like we tend to stand out from time to time, and I think everyone has those moments when they're trying to redefine themselves. Inside or outside of the culture? Inside or outside of the culture. What you got there, Shane? Yeah, yeah I, I sort of went down the same track as uh, Boxer there and defining, uh, according to me, culture as beliefs, um, behaviours and actions that you do uh, within a group or, or within a um, um, specific uh, group of people or, or not. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, yeah, that's what I got with, yeah, and yeah, there's different sorts of kainas just reflecting on some of the cultures that I, I, I'm, a, I'm a, a part of, uh, sporting culture, Māori culture, um, um, uh, with alumni culture, um, schools, uh, just different, different groups that I'm associating with, associated with, but then our beliefs and our actions and behaviours are all similar um, within that, you know, in whānau culture, family culture. Um, yeah, yeah, it's another huge topic, uh, um, but that's what um, culture is to me. Yeah. And it's interesting in a way because due to different belief and value systems within different peoples being different cultures, you know, wars are created over that. Mm. Wars mm. being fought, people have died. Mm. An essence of, of those alternate beliefs, um, which in the opinion of, of, of the, other, the other culture is incorrect to, uh, to the other, <laughs> you know? And they're all going, well, you don't know, you're right, we're, you're wrong, we're right. Uh, we're right, you're wrong. If you don't agree, <laughs> um. yeah. Because if you look at a group of people that come to an agreement within beliefs or values, so that's the directly connected, therefore, to their actions and their behaviours within the group. The group will even self um, 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 correct or punish. Like, like they'll they'll bring, there's a teaching process that goes through within that culture. This is the way we do it. This is, no, that's not the way we do it. This is the way we do it. No, that's not the way we do it. We do it like this. This is, this is who or what we are. This is how we are within this space. And whether that's actually said aloud or not is a whole different thing. Because it's, it'll be um, taking the lead, someone will take the lead, and then people who have a respect for that will fall within um, fitting that environment. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's both taught, possibly inbred in a way, you know, like bred within, and then there's some level of expression that happens, which is exactly actually what the, what mm. the dictionary said. I didn't recognise that that's what it was, but um, it's kind of cool. Because during the entire time, at least if we go chronologically, if someone stays within the same cultural environment, they'll come in as a child, they'll get their learnings, they'll be, at some point, they'll probably fight against it or push away from it mm. as they're defining themselves. And let's say they, they did that, they had their moment, and then they might come in, then they might contribute because they have children, that kind of thing. And then as chronological age carries on, They'll actually get to the point where they're part of creating their own culture. The lead of, of the way that that generation's culture is going to be. Yeah. It's interesting from that fact, because exactly what you said about how you learn and develop and then begin to lead out over that process. Like, um, I think one of the really clearest cultures when it's brought forward and I actually have a minute to think about is that all black culture um, that I've studied a bit so so businesses all over the world have have found that this is such a common factor of a culture that has worked so much so um, the all blacks are the most winning team and group of people and anything are the most winning of any sport in a absolute history um winning a winning 88 percent of their games over over an average so over say the for example 100 or 1000 games have played that 188 or they've won 888 at that instance so they played thousands and thousands of games and that's their average but that's due to their culture being such a successful one so um, one, of the, one of the first things is, so they'll have their captain's run or their training or their, um, 
whatever they do, and they'll be in, in the changing rooms afterwards having their, their chat down. And it was explained to me that um, Dan Carter, at the time, Dan Carter and Rich McCaw would be the first to pick up the brooms, being the captain and vice captain, first to pick up the brooms. And in, um, what's the word? When. When you've been, I'll think of it, but oh, it's, it's that word I need. But in, <laughs> in, the, in the thing of not being too big, in their being, Humble. in their mindset, in their. Humble? Not the reverse of that. When you're ashamed, in a way. Ooh. But it's like, through, through not being too big, no one is too big to do the bottom job mm. in that way. You know, like they're, they're the captain and vice captain of the All Blacks and they do the, the job that not even the water boy, you know, the water boy should be doing type of thing in a way of an outside thinking. But that just means that they lead out so that every other person can be as humbled to be down towards that to to be, you know, to be cl the cleaner, the cleaner after the All Blacks. And um, that is because the All Blacks belief in their culture is that no one looks after the All Blacks. So no one comes after and cleans up after the All Blacks because they are self-supportive in themselves to do that. Um, they also have a big factor of bad apples and um, just no bad apples exist. Um, you, you don't go out drinking at all when you're in the All Blacks in, in essence because that creates um, a toxic, a toxin within it. And so, you know, it doesn't matter how good the player is individually, you know, they could be the best player in the world, but if they're in essence a bad apple, they bring a toxin into that environment, they're just not, not, um, with, not kept within that environment because it doesn't benefit the rest of the team. And through that, um, excelling with, with individuals that can play by everyone's rules. Um, and also the other thing was the fact that they just play basics so much. They, they, the basics are, are always done because they are never basic enough of basic ball handling, mm. basic running, basic tackling. Because they're, they're good enough to be able to play on the run of having, um, you know, show offy stuff, mm. but they don't need it because they control the game through basic technique. Mm. And um, just no matter where you are, I feel in your sport or in your passion or in your career, turning back to the basic side of it. And understanding them a lot, you can keep pulling back from it, mm. keep utilising that even at your top end of, of your skills. So on a contrast, yes. if you are uh, a member of a team that um, doesn't have that culture and you look to the leaders to create the culture, what, what, what's that like? I mean, I've never been a team guy. Mm. Um, you know, and so when you have a team that's, that sort of battling to get on the same page and the role models or the people or, or the culture is, <laughs> is it's not quite gelling. It's sort of, and, you know, I mean, that's a difficult place to come from too. That's a, that's a great question. So um, I played a lot of rugby as a, as a kid. Um, when did I start rugby? Like, uh Four and a half, five. Oh, okay. So that was young. Um, but when I started <laughs> back again, um, I think it was in my 13th grade. And um, I had an okay overarm hooker throw on me. Yeah. Um, but in that grade, so I'm going to start real start. In that grade, um, we were, my forward pack, you know, if I tried to get arms up, I was just a tiny fella. Yeah. Tried to get arms up. I was chubby and I was tiny and I couldn't put my arms around our four pack. We had the biggest four pack in um, our 
grade with big Samoan fellas, just huge guys. <laughs> and I was the number eight at the back of it because yeah. I was just a forward. I, was, I couldn't run like the backs yeah. um, at that time. You know, everyone had grown faster than me. Yeah. Um, so there was one side of where I pulled a lot of, you know, dealing with bigger people yeah. in my team. And then we moved forward. Um, when I got to St. Paul's, I had, it wasn't my first year, probably my second, so fifth, sixth and seventh form, I was always the captain of my rugby teams. Um, in fifth form, I was in an under 65 team for a couple of years put as the captain of them just because of my weight and then in seventh form I was actually just turned 18 and my coach comes to me who was no the coach of the first 15 comes to me this is going somewhere and he <laughs> goes um Alex I, I need you to be the captain of the under 16 team not just turned 18 but you'd look at me and you wouldn't second guess that I was a day older than 16 yeah and I was like, oh, yeah, you know. And so I was training with the team and it was all good. And, um, okay, actually, I'm mixing my stories. When I was captain of one of my under-65 teams, all the boys wanted to do was fight. Yeah. So I would fight those boys to get them back onto their side of the pitch so that we could go and play some rugby because... Like we were talking about the other day, the violence wasn't in me. Um, I had one time where, I, where I, we couldn't decide what to do in a corner, and I said, tap and go, let's go, pass the ball to me. And I ran from five metres back, took the ball, ran into the captain of the other players, and just floored him, took two more steps over their other players, and got a try. And the boys lost their stuff, and they were like, yeah, don't try to take us on. And I was like, get the fuck back. It's a try. That's cool, but we don't need to be like, yeah. You know, we need to be humble in the fact that hey, actually, we did a, we did good as a team, and we put ourselves in a good position, yeah. and we made the best of that. Um, and for me, being the older, so then going back to being in the under sixteen team, being the older, and so I was two years older than all the boys, three years older than some of them, and. Um, to actually really be respected by them mm. created such an interesting, genuine environment, environment because those boys were, that, were the boys that were developed into the first 15 from there. Mm. So to actually create a good environment where, hey, they looked up to me and I was pretty humble, you know. Um, mm. That's where I really actually applied my rugby, I felt, because really felt valued. Mm. And... For, for someone who you look up to to be a genuine, valuable person, mm. then you're going to want to do anything for them. Like, man, we used to have some, some good times around school within our rugby as well, within a team environment, you know, mm. that created that team environment. Um, so on the opposite side of not having a good team environment with the boys that just wanted to fight, mm. I would actually get in more of a tussle with them you know, I'd run in and pull them off people and be walking them back than the other guys on the other team, you know. And that's what I quite often find interesting is when you see a tussle on a rugby field, which you don't really anymore, they all go opposite to each other. But I'd always bring my guys. I'm like, get back out of here. No. <laughs> mm. So just two sides of, of team environments that I was like, whoever in a way leads it when they're valued and um, and you know looked up to in a way then you can really mm. get traction with the team to be towards a successful culture that it creates mm. does that make yeah, sense? yeah it does and then so I mean like as, as I'm listening I'm looking around at so many different environments that um, where people people in general and different cultures, if you have a common goal, it's a lot easier for everyone to get together to actually get onto the same page. Yeah. And uh, if someone else has a different, differing idea of what they want to achieve, then that's an interesting aspect of how things unfold. 
Western culture. I mean, we, I've worked with a few different cultures. So in the circus, I would have, um, you know, worked with people from all over the world, some that didn't speak English, um, some that you still had to communicate with who didn't speak English, um, some that learnt English here while, and, and I taught them English. Um, uh, and so we're talking in broken English for me has been quite easy and, and have an ear for it, you know, and that's a, that's the compassion that I would have for, um, I guess, much like being a captain, I suppose, to try and get everyone on the same team, keep everyone operating safely, um, without trying to, um, upset any of the cultural values, you know, because everyone has their cultural values. And um, when you meet people from other cultures, you don't necessarily know what they are if you haven't spent any time with that culture. And so there's a bit of leniency on both sides. Um, you know, and then they're entering your culture as a stranger, <laughs> which is already, already interesting. Um, you know, and um, by crikey, circus culture was interesting. Mm. Um, we certainly very much had um, very good survival instincts, um, you know, so, and, and how we might come together sometimes was with different purposes, whether we've got a lean run or we just need to go and find some hay or, you know, and I'm pretty sure there's the odd story of some hay barns being sort of lacking a couple of bales as we left town. <laughs> But when you just need food, eh? Honestly, I mean, who can begrudge an elephant some freaking coin? You just can't. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, you know, we would have had probably at any given time, probably four different um, um, uh, cultures of people, you know, whether it be Māori, um, European, um, Asian, um, travelling with us at the same time. Uh, it's very cool for blending. So, in in that aspect, specifically that aspect, would it would it not would ethnicity be a better word? I, I don't. Would it be? No, nah, because like a, 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 if within um, religions, and once you get overseas, you've got a, a mix of religions within the same people that are quite strong. So some are Muslim, mm. some are, uh, have, so uh, to me, it's more like a culture of, of how, of their behavior or their beliefs. Mm. So yep, there was Vietnamese, Chinese, um, South Americans, yeah. um, some are Christians, some are Catholic, some are, you know, and a lot of South Americans were um, Catholics. Yep. You know, and so that was their culture. Yeah. Um, their belief systems or they had something else and different provinces different uh, it's really complex uh, on some point if you want to make it complex or they're just people that all have the same thing in common which is they love circus mm -hmm. yeah wow Shane what you got there yeah a few things uh, uh, just yeah no, just listening to to the great conversations that, that were happening and then uh, the, the example that um, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of some really successful cultures, one being my uh, my employment or my work culture. I, I really value and, and love my work culture. And like what Alex was saying and some of the, the attributes or character traits that he he mentioned um, with the All Blacks and, and being uh, showing humility, um, showing service, compassion, um, Loyalty, um, respect, uh, and, 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 and doing their best for each other. And that's a, a culture that I, I've been uh, fortunate enough to be a part of uh, with, with uh, my, my work. And I feel uh, there's no hierarchy, uh, hierarchical uh, structure. It uh, feels like um, we're all equal. Uh, and it doesn't matter what role we play, we all share that, share that role and share those um, those tasks or, or duty. And um, to me, that that's a successful uh, culture and, and a culture that I I I feel I thrive in, and, and I I 
um, genuinely want to contribute to um, at, at times. And then when the question that Boxer posed around, you know, what happens when you're uh, in a team that struggles to win or, or uh, um, doesn't have a good culture and or not successful, not getting points on the board or not winning games and um, and fortunate enough, I have been in uh, uh, some cultures that have not been successful. Um, and uh, and I was thinking, you know, what happens inside that, that environment? Um, uh, what have I noticed are some common factors uh, within that? And um, uh, a couple of things that come to mind, uh, especially in uh, an in employment uh, uh, culture, work culture, what, I, what I've found is that if you don't fit in a culture within a, an employment uh, frame, um, you're either exited out uh, or, or you move or you remove yourself from that culture um, and um, it, it's almost like oh yeah you're you, you've got to buy into what the company organization is about you may meet them on certain values or, or, or beliefs um, but if you sort of you know speak up and speak out and and if you're the minority uh, or if there's not a group of you saying the same things uh, from my experience you're exited out uh, or you're you're moved on or you're restructured I think that's a term they use within the employment sector because it's quite difficult to get rid of someone uh, nowadays, but uh, I've noticed that if you restructure your business, uh, you can uh, get rid of, I guess, the bad apples, or ways around um, around uh, doing that. And um, and then within this, and that's important. Then within a sporting, you know, being a part of some uh, some cultures that I've felt were not good and, and realised within that there was no respect, there was no trust from the head coach down or the management down uh, and vice versa in an employment role as well or working culture. Um, and I believe there's got to be trust, there's got to be respect uh, on all levels. And, and I was just trying to identify oh, when some a culture that I've been a part of that, that that may not have been for the betterment or for the growth of the company. What's in it, or or where is that coming from, or, or what is the catalyst, or what is the the fact or the main thing that sort of um, or the contrast, and 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 that's what what I've found and. Um, uh, when there's no buy-in, uh, when there's individuals, um, when there's no leadership, no clear leadership, no real vision of where it's just playing day to day or game by game or, or day. Uh, um, and in those environments that I've been a part of, I have found not useful. And uh, I, I feel culture is a huge part of one's success, whatever that may, may be. And if the culture is right um, for everyone and it works, uh, well, that's to me what will work or, or be successful. Um, whatever success might, might be, but I was just reflecting on, on uh, my experiences around cultures uh, and around culture and um, times where I, I felt worked really well and what was it and I mentioned those before and then uh, in reverse what wasn't um, 
what were some key factors that didn't work. Mm. Yeah, so, so basically, yeah, no, that was this. <laughs> Um, what I was thinking of as you guys were talking and discussing and and um, just wanted to share those, those points uh, from um, in the environments where they've been uh, successful, I guess, and, and unsuccessful uh, for me and my experiences around that. And um, yeah, I've been on uh, both sides where I've left an environment or I've left the culture, but then I've been uh, also being a part of a culture that I really loved and uh, uh, felt I aligned with the values, but management at that time um, uh, restructured or exited me out of that environment. So I've been in, in sort of both environments and, and um, yeah, yeah, not, not pleasant to environments to, to be a part of. Um, but just understanding for me, what is the key aspects or the key key um, components or traits uh, for me? Yeah, I've got I've got I'm very blessed to have some really um, two two women come to mind who are my very very good friends, and they've gone down um, leadership paths in corporate environments. And so we often have some very stimulating conversations around culture and within their cultures and their leadership roles. Um, it is very much what you're talking about, Shan. It's, it's, it's about um, really connecting with the people that are um, in their teams. And then, and here's the cool thing. And so within, because they're quite, both of the organisations are quite significantly large in New Zealand. And so there's also a culture of the company, but then there's subcultures mm -hmm. within, yeah? And these subcultures can be very different. It's kind of like a garden bed um, where, um, where there's just so much variety that happens and a lot of it's driven by the person who's in the management leadership role. So in that, um, even if they have a manager, I'm thinking of one particular person, even if they have like a general manager who has a certain way of doing things which doesn't always work for her, she will still find deep inside of herself a way to um, still grow and to grow her team. This particular lady, a woman I'm thinking of. Um, but during that process of it, it can be real hard work for her as she's working at how can she develop herself and her team and thrive in an environment that's a bit thorny <laughs> you know in amongst a, um, a rose beds how can she be um the the rose blossoming and her team within that environment and it's definitely quite a not always a conscious thing for everybody some managers some people are just the way they are and in their subculture within an organization it's just acceptable to be tidy at work you know it's just mm. it's just it, that's just the culture here most people get away with looking busy this is a big generalization but people can get away with looking busy and not really achieving anything at the end of the day the almost agreed culture is do what you have to do and not much else because we're not they don't value us mm. um and yet it's not always about money that value comes in. The culture is completely separate to money. The culture is that whole um, sense and feeling of, I, I believe, belonging, of having a role to play, of knowing when to step up or when to step out, when to um, participate. And in New Zealand, we have such a rich Māori culture it's beautiful to um, witness the result, the art, let's say, of a kapa haka team. The way they've got to that final representation, their journey there, is the culture, though. Not, yeah. not the display. You know? um, and that's like anything and anyone, even down to a family. Yeah. Take it to the petri dish, the culture that I have in my body. 
the actual environment within my body is either in growth or not in growth. That's yeah, that's my contribution. I love all the variety that's come in. I'd like to ask you um, a question. Me? Yeah. yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, so you're an NLP trainer. Yep. Um, you've been doing it for twenty odd years. You work with a lot of people, and and one of the subjects that is talked about not often, but it comes up, is modelling. So, people who experience and grow in a good culture, can you link that to being uh, people who rise to their best, um, then are modelled? As in, what would be the process? Because, I mean, there's people come from all different environments, but from cultures. Some people come from the shittiest culture and become a diamond. Some people come from the best environment, become a shithead. Or they become a diamond. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's versions of all sorts of when people come and where they get to a point where they have... You've talked about modeling with your, your friends and bits and pieces, and it's just like, what is your experience with different people in different cultures and where they've arrived to or where they've actually, their performance is just peaking? Because you do see, you see, <laughs> you see potential, right? Yeah. yeah. You see potential. So it's, a, it's a, a loaded question, that one. Um, is it? Yeah, which needs some levels of, of um, foundations to answer it. So okay. NLP came out of modelling, and it's true whakapapa. So um, modelling was a very process that occurred in order to study people who were of excellence. And the very process of modelling is looking into the intricacies of how someone makes themselves up in a very specific ability to continue repetitively to be a high achiever in an area. Does that make sense? So it's actually, it's not a, modeling isn't done so grossly. It's quite really a very specific field or outcome that someone is, is modeling. Um, and so the, the modeling process is not just seeing what they do from the outside. It's actually going into how they're structuring and restructuring and, and changing the information and what really ultimately what is in play when things go wrong so what how can they consistently over time always get a certain successful outcome so modeling at a gross from the question level um nlp very specifically in a modeling sense so if we that turns it back inside out which is not entirely pure in the statement um can the the distinct the the very specific information that can come from there orders up a certain palette of information or um selection of of let's say music notes that then can be put together in such a way that someone else can then reproduce the same results um, so how is it connected to culture well, yeah, certainly someone would, um, a lot of the successful models that have come and are presented through NLP, and that's just not NLP now, it's just a huge big body of knowledge, um, is the reproduction of a certain way of being. And it does include um, modeling the values. What values does someone have inside of here? What are they not valuing? Because that's just, it's almost like within that space, you've got to notice what is not being paid attention to, because that is just as important as what is being paid attention to. So it's a very beautiful, complex um, topic, I guess, just like a human being and groups of human beings interacting. I don't know that I answered your question, because it's a big... It's a big question. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just, I guess I'm reflecting on the fact that um, for the journey that you've had, that's its own culture. Yeah, so personal development is its own culture. Personal development is its own culture. It was not, it's amazing how broad the conversation is and where we get to it in, in it. Um, and I believe that um, even just your highest value is your own culture. So if you have a high value around learning or growth, 
that becomes your culture. It kind of leads, leads out and it'll fil infiltrate every area of our life. And if we come across, it, using that one, if we come across people who aren't interested in growing or learning, then there's just an immediate bounce back. There's just no match. I think that's really what I was asking and pointing to, and without words, I'm not knowing quite how to ask the question in a way that was maybe better. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just linking it to use, what, what conversations are useful, and this is useful for me. Okay. You know, and then what conversations for anyone who's watching are useful for them, and how much more information and how many cultures are they involved with, with they're not even aware that it's actually part of their belief system. And there's more cultures out there that they can study, and it's not a. And it's interesting because for some some reason the word betrayal just, um, uh, you know, to be interested in something else doesn't mean you're going against your own culture. I think it's fun because people's um, people's fascinations or interests or where they spend their time, money, energy, which comes back to a values thing, um, can be really different. Sometimes even paradoxical, almost complete opposite. And, and the expression within that culture is present and then they go somewhere else and then they get a different expression. Mm. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, the downside. The, according to Karen, <laughs> <laughs> the downside of a culture is um, even uh, is that this is the way it is and you must comply. Um, if it's just led by one person without much else feeding, it becomes a dictatorship, according to me. Does that make sense? If there's no real feeding, it becomes a dictatorship or a cult or, a, um, or even just a religion or a man, I'm going off into areas. Um, so just according to me, a culture is the healthiest culture would be one like a really healthy garden where even the weeds are recognized as nutritious food. If a weed is actually a noxious plant, then knowing how to and what to do with that. Because sometimes even something like a company, I'm going way off into the other area because we've spent so much time on rugby. <laughs> 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 um, um, like a, a comfrey or a barish is a is a beautiful herb but if it goes crazy in the garden it's everywhere and you can't eat or use that much comfrey or barish um, but when it mulches down into the garden that's great nutrition for the soil so a real healthy leadership whether it's us or whether we're looking for someone to follow if that's what our version of the world is then we're looking for the best in people, what they're good and capable of, and what culture, how can you bring the best out in someone? Mm. Yeah. It's interesting, because I was just thinking at a level of, even, even within an actual Petri dish, or if you basically go within your body, like, the development of of the cells as they as they process eventually break down within a way that can cull off other cells, like because because there's too much. So maybe within a petri dish, like it's only going to grow within the petri dish outweigh so it only grows to its size of culture uh, well, that it's got and then so once it can't grow anymore that development can stop yeah the, the growth development so like a big tree in a small pot concept yeah absolutely and even within your body like eventual biological growth physically stops mental growth can continue that's a different thing mm. but eventually it stops to the point where it actually starts to shut down being non-movement being dead you know and the process of that culture within the bacteria the um 
the the atoms mm. eventually go back into the cycle. Yeah. Mm. To feed to feed back into so, to the feed new back cycle. into the new cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Mm. And so and that 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 was really interesting because there is some bacteria in a way over time of process that I'm linking to something like what the body with my diabetes with a high blood sugar um, like melanoma mm. it actually creates something that tries to tries to get rid of all the blood sugar which actually kills the body in its trying to heal process mm. like melanoma from my understanding of what we're talking about it actually drowns the body trying to create the helpful bacteria in a way. Is that, is that the way we got to? For uh, when when people drown in their lungs. Oh, oh for the for, pneumonia. A, for, no, for pneumonia oh, or pneumonia, anything sorry. anything that's respiratory. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, wrong with. That's right. Um, yeah, the body creates a, um, a, an over a, a, an overachiever amount of um, defence. Um, leading to um, you know a difficulty in exchanging oxygen. Yeah, which in a then compared to a dictatorship, which you came around to, it, like at the raw essence of it, there's sort of in a way at versions of looking at it mm. that stopping of growth. Mm. Um, and within, yeah, a culture that someone tries to control mm. that you can't surpass the master type of thing. Mm. Um, and people, yeah, either choose to leave or uh, mm. maybe mysteriously disappear. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the hardest thing that, um, that is also the most beautiful thing is to run this fine line i'm thinking about in, in um, training or, or that kind of environment w which i love is to really really be willing openly be willing that the people that you're offering a development space for that they be can become better than the trainer that's the, when i say the hardest and the and the most beautiful thing too is to run that line of just like really let the growth happen knowing that if it's a well cultivated environment, they'll become real learners and real lovers of, um, of being their best more often and more flexible and therefore able to touch more people in that field. And if you're really good at what you do, you actually put yourself out of a job concept. And I know my two friends I'm referencing are so good at what they do too, that that's the process. They, they constantly grow their teams up. Um, and then they find that, that they've got now a new role. Um, because if we really, according to me, if we're really good at what we do, we no longer have to do what we did. And then we go and find ourselves another thing to get excited about. Mm. Which kind of feeds exactly what you're saying. It's like that um, the Bahudukawa tree in the box can't really be its best, its best beautiful Bahudukawa tree inside of that box when she's in the ground she can just maybe reproduce it's um <laughs> it's quite interesting how 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 fast a, a culture can present itself like in our current situation um with being at home in our lockdown um there's um the people who don't necessarily see the reason to be at home and then there's the in, people in our space. No, and in, in, in all of New Zealand. Oh, okay. Sorry, all in, in New Zealand, and, and probably in different countries within the world. There's the people who sort of say, "Hey, let's get on with things. The things are okay." And and um, and then there's those that are just absolutely not. So that's two different cultures just developed in one conversation from our leader. You know, and and, and that's the hard task of being a leader, right? It's sort of, um, and how we navigate within that and how we, how we connect to the different cultures that are presented. I mean, we've had our own conversations and uh, honestly, we're lucky to be at home. We've created our own culture. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and subculture. Uh, our subcul <laughs> oh, subculture. You know, we've got a subculture. We have a choice to to um, uh, to be happy in our environment, and we are. I actually really enjoying it. Um, and I hope that there are lots of people out there that are making the most of the time to connect with the people that they love somehow. And um, in their little groups, that's a culture, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and what becomes important all of a sudden. And all of a sudden, because we all of a sudden are thinking about people that we may not have thought about in a certain way mm -hmm. that are part of a past culture, mm -hmm. you know, and then they're back in your current culture. And it's a fascinating conversation for me. Mm -hmm. and. and I'm really glad Alex brought the word up. Yeah. Mm. Shame. Mm. I don't. I don't know anything actually. How's it going at your end there? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really busy, eh? Yeah, the culture's great here where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just coming into the lockdown, creating a, a new culture, a new norm. Or, or being a part of, and then noticing the subcultures within that one culture. Um, but yeah, fortunate enough to, I, I personally thought I would struggle during this uh, lockdown period, uh, just for my desire, need to just get out and do stuff and see someone and help someone and um, work with people and, um, whether it's helping teach a skill or or coaching different levels, but I've really really enjoyed just being at home uh, with with my loved ones and creating a new culture within our culture because we had a way of being prior to to going into lockdown. But now I can see us creating new cultures or, or, or creating a new culture now uh, as a result of being in, in, in the lockdown. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I believe we've gone through the whole, our culture at home has gone through the whole uh, forming, storming, norming, <laughs> forming. Um, process over this last four weeks, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel we're we we we're, we're just starting to get things right now. So we're we're oh. heading towards performing and, and building that culture now that everyone knows what we're doing and knows the roles that we play, and we all bring something unique. Um, and uh, the, the the sibling walls are minimising. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because we sibling have... rivalry because they <laughs> none of my children love losing, and just a simple <laughs> game of cards, a simple game of cards, almost going to start World War Three, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the joy of actually having the two weeks of a group of three and three animals and then Charm being able to come in after her um, quarantine and coming back in the country. And then we did that reorganisation. So we'd gotten to performing because it was just the three of us and we worked there. And then we had to um, go through that very process again um, as quickly as possible to reform a new norm mm. and then go into the performing. And, and I really saw it happening yesterday as in, now we've normed into a new, everyone's sort of found their, their space within the four of us now. So I love that you brought that up. Yeah, we had the actual just moment of, of having to reorganize with just one person coming in. And so yeah. it was already in there. And oh, I've got something else to say about what you said about, you know, how you're creating a culture within your culture, so are we. Everyone's sort of getting down to the value conversations and and really, really having a look internally, personally, and within our space at a metaphysical level. This is fascinating. At a metaphysical level, the very lockdown process is almost joyful because people all, mm. everything else gets taken away. And then people go, Well, how do I feel about this? What's going on? 
and then we might go outside to have a look and then we come back in and we go well how, how are you and it's it's like this and then then the um acceptance of the different variants of thinking within the entire thing almost creates not just a subculture if you can do this visually there was one person walking around in their bubble interacting with whatever they did in their week and then they'd form that that person would form with multiple groups now we've got really quite set bigger bubbles to use their word and then you get enough of those cultures moving together you actually form quite significantly new thought processes at an evolutionary process this and at a metaphysical process it's quite exciting the process of going through it isn't always comfortable <laughs> <laughs> love you <laughs> your face is so happy oh get into <laughs> you keep talking, baby. You're gorgeous. <laughs> you get such a glow. Okay. All right. So I think the hour's up. <laughs> <laughs> I probably interrupted everybody in that oh, little range. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is so exciting. At the same time as it being not so easy, it's so exciting. Um, History's being made. Mm. Mm. A new path, new paths being carved. You know. And when we get to burst our bubbles, <laughs> whatever that looks like, that's also the opportunity to burst old beliefs, if you like. You know, like that. Oh man, we're not going there today. Okay, so what have, if anything, you taken from our conversation today? What is the thought? Are we good? It's 10 o'clock. Oh, wow. Hmm. Um, what have I taken? I love watching you talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the energy is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> She's in there. Yeah. I've decided I'm going to go plant a pudding cow tree. Yes! <laughs> oh, the deep metaphor worked. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the digger? Oh, he's over there in the black tree. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also, the thing that growth, development, change a cult in a culture can't happen in a sterile environment mm. a culture is, is designed to not be sterile even though everything around it is sterile in the physical in a physical laboratory it's not a phys it's not a sterile environment so accepting the challenges that it comes into the different beliefs use a lot utilizing the different values that that add to it and playing with them and utilizing them and ha having them in everything mm -hmm. it's just not sterile it's not super duper clean That's beautiful. That's why the blend of communication with other people and connection with other people adds to our life, right? Yeah. yeah. Shan, have you got something that you're taking from today? Um, just, um, just going to um, acknowledge the obnoxious weeds in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, you have a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look at my weeds differently now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take my word for it. You got to check them out. <laughs> There's necessary though. That comes into that non-sterile space, eh? Hey? But if you've got some poo don't tell Boxer. Tell <laughs> 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 Mum. Is this what you're looking for? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, but just just acknowledging within within a culture, just just um, acknowledging and just being more aware of, of, of everything within in the culture and sort of how I respond to uh, each weed <laughs> <laughs> within the cultures I'm in. But yeah, yeah, that, that's my contribution. I just want to thank uh, each of you for uh, your sharing and for your for our discussion uh, on Scan. Enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for contributing. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay. All right. I'm going to put it off now. <laughs> <laughs> See you.